Hi friends, welcome to Non-Functional Club. In this session, we will be looking into Charles Proxy tool. So first of all, we'll understand the architecture of Charles Proxy tool. Then we'll look into the functionalities of how we can set, set up Charles Proxy on a Windows machine and how we can connect Charles Proxy to a mobile device. So we are going to look into all the setups re related stuff, installation related stuff and the architecture. So let's begin. Let's have a look in the Charles Proxy architecture in terms of how Charles Proxy actually work. So here you can see we have kept three modules or three modules are placed here. One is your mobile device. Then we have Charles Proxy and then we have internet or the server machine from where the requests will be processed. So usually in, in a, every client server architecture, you will have a client from where the request is sent and you will have a server from where you get the response for that particular request. Now, as you have Charles proxy in between, as you have already set it as a proxy, definitely each and every request, each and every network call will be going through the Charles proxy itself. So whenever a client does any request, that request will go through Charles proxy to the server. And once that request is gone to the server, as per the processing, as per the overall processing of that request, you are going to get a response. So as the request also went through Charles proxy, similarly the response also will come through Charles proxy itself. So here first the request response will come and then it will be sent again to your particular client device so in this way the overall processing whenever you are connected to Charles proxy happens so in Charles proxy we have various functionalities like you can tether the request you can modify the request and send it or you can bypass in terms of you can you know slow down the network and see what is the request and response cycle so all this stuff you can do using Charles proxy this is the basic architecture how Charles proxy works. So after the installation of Charles proxy, we'll move to some proxy setup steps. So whatever are required for Charles proxy to work completely when a remote device is connected or even on the Chrome browser or the browser which you're using on your PC or laptop where, Chrome, where Charles proxy is already installed. So there are three important steps with the latest Charles version. So the first one is we'll have to set up IP and proxy on the connected Wi-Fi network. So this is regarding to your mobile device. Second step will also be about certificate installation on the mobile device. As mobile device is an external device, it may be Android or iOS device. There we'll need to install the Charles proxy certificate. We are going to look into details about this step also. And the third important step is in Charles proxy itself, we'll have to set up the SSL proxy to bypass the network and to understand the SSL settings or in terms of giving permission for all the SSL traffic to run and encode the traffic which is coming from the network. So once the SSL proxy is enabled, all the traffic which is already encoded will be decoded and it will be visible for us to further debug it. So let's begin with the setup. So let's see the process of downloading Charles proxy from where you can download it. So here on browser you can if you just place Charles proxy download. The first link itself will navigate us to the official site for Charles proxy. Charles proxy is a paid tool but we get a free trial version as well. So if we want to download that, we can click on this particular link and the download should be enabled. And this is 462 version. So we can just click on the Windows 64 bit version. As my system is 64 bit, I have initiated that. If you have Mac OS or Linux, all the three systems are supported by Charles proxy. So the download is in progress. Once the download is done, I'll be pausing this for now as I have already installed Charles proxy same version. So once your download is completed, you can just initiate or you can just launch it and the 
Dot.exe file will be opened and you can install it as you install other applications. For now, I'll just launch Charles Proxy. I have already installed and downloaded and installed it. If you see here, this is the trial version which I was talking about. So there are a few restrictions whenever you are opening Charles Proxy for trial version. It will show us delay of nine seconds. For us, it will still work. Now, whenever Charles Proxy opens, you'll get a panel which will have a recording by default enabled. So what we'll do, why this recording is enabled or how it works is I'll show you. So for now, uh, if you see, it has also started utilizing or showing us the sites which it is accessed. So here now we have opened Charles Proxy site again. So here you can see the Charles Proxy was captured. So obviously the network data which is calculated or which is going on in the current machine will be captured here. We are uh, concerned about or we are going to see how we can connect Charles Proxy on a mobile device. So for now, I'll be stopping this recording as we don't want it to just clear this. You can just right click and say clear others. And even this one you can clear for now. I'll keep it. Now the simplest way we'll be seeing how we can connect Charles proxy to a mobile device. So here, let's see how we can connect our mobile device for all the network of the mobile device to be captured on Charles proxy. So how we can connect it or configure our mobile with Charles proxy. Here, if you go to help section, you will get local IP address. If you click on it, you will be seeing all the IP addresses to which the current machine on which Charles proxy is configured has access to. So these are all the IPs. Obviously, my current machine is connected to a wireless adapter and it is Qualcomm adapter on this particular IP. So what I should be doing is I should be configuring my proxy on this particular IP and for the proxy, if we go to proxy and here if we just check the proxy settings, here you will see that it is configured on 8888. So double it double it is by default configured for Charles proxy to function. If you want it to be running on some other port, you can just change it and it will be running on that particular port. For now, I'll keep it by default as it is. If you go to local IP, if you're confused, so this is the actual uh, area where people get confused or where some issues are faced while connecting to the IP address. So how you can verify or how you can finalize that this is the particular IP to which your particular machine is connected. So you can just go to your uh, Wi-Fi through which it is connected. So currently I'm connected to Omkar. Here, if I go, we can see my SSID with the same name. And if you come to the description, you can see Qualcomm wireless adapter. Now, what we are actually concerned or what we are actually looking out is this particular IP. So here you can see IPv4 IP address that is 192.168.1.106. Also here, if you see, it is the same IP. So we are up to the right IP. We can conclude this. So you can you need to check the same whenever you are configuring mobile device using an IP. So now I have just opened a mobile device. I'll show you how we can actually configure it. So here I'll go to my Wi-Fi settings. Again, I'll go to the same network that is Omkar. Here, if you see, we need to do some extra settings. So now already I'm connected to the same network. One more uh, thing to be noted is whenever you are using Charles proxy, you should always be in the same network. So your Charles proxy network and your mobiles network should be on the same network or connected to the same network. Now, as we are going to configure proxy setup here, if you, you have to select proxy and you have to go to manual. Also for few devices, if you just long press on so on the connected setup, you will be getting the advanced options in in this particular case or in this particular device only by clicking on the settings icon. I am able to go to the additional settings of Wi-Fi. Now here I am going to configure my Wi-Fi. I've selected manual and obviously I'll be adding the IP which we just saw. So again, coming back to Charles proxy, 
we need to set up this particular IP that is 192.168.1.106. So we'll go here. We'll be placing 192.168.1.106. And this is the same one. Again, we are even concerned about the port. So if you see there is next option that is port, that is 8888. Once you do it, you will see save button is enabled now. If you just remove it, you will see save button disabled. So once you do this, just click on save. Now your Wi-Fi, particular Wi-Fi is going through this particular proxy. So all the mobile network traffic will be going through the this particular IP and through this port, which is same that is configured on this particular Charles proxy network. So here, if you start recording now, and so whenever we set up the proxy and the IP, which we just saw, saw on the device, and then when you browse or when you open your browser, so whenever a network hit is made on the browser of the device which is connected you will get a prompt where it will ask you that there is a connection attempt made on this machine so obviously we will need to allow this once you allow all the network traffic between the device and the laptop or computer which is which you are connected to will work now if you see it will just open my mobile now if you see if i do any action i have just started the recording again on charles proxy if i go to chrome you can see google has launched in my chrome and similar indexing or similar things are noted over here or are configured over here or are captured by charles proxy if you just try to open it and go to contents you will see that this particular contents are currently in encrypted form so you cannot read any of the content which is going on or which is obviously going on in your mobile. So to enable this or to actually be visible to see what all content is going throughout the mobile device, you need to set up a certificate. So to set up certificate, you can see here in, in the help section, there is SSL proxying and there is one more option that is install child certificate. So to install child certificate, for now, I'll just uh, stop the recording as it is not necessary. Again, we'll go to help section, SSL proxying and install Charles root certificate. Here you will see there is one step given properly that can configure your device on a HTTP proxy. So this is the first step which we have done. We have set up a proxy uh, on a particular port. Now we have to go to browser and we have to open this particular site that is chls.pro SSL. So I'll just open my window screen or my device screen again. And we'll go here. We'll just type in ch and this one. So if you go here, you will see in the back end. If you just open the download section or through the notification panel, you can see that the certificate is downloaded here. So now downloading of the certificate is done. Let's try to launch or install the certificate on mobile device. So here you'll have to navigate to settings. In settings, you'll have to navigate to security. And in security, we'll get the option of other security settings so obviously it will be different for your particular mobile device currently i'm using samsung device with uh, android os version 12. so here if we navigate to user security certificate you will be displayed with all the security certificates which are installed here for now i want to install a certificate which we have downloaded for charles proxy so we can click on I'll just navigate back. We can click on install from device storage option. This option we have. 
So if we click here, we'll be getting an option of CA certificate. We'll open that and we'll click on install anyway. Now my particular certificate is downloaded in this download folder. I'll just click on it and I'll say done. So you'll see in proper text message CA certificate installed. Now we are already done with the IP setup using the local IP address and the proxy setup with this local IP address and next step was to install the certificate on the device. After these two setups are done, third important setup will be around the SSL proxy settings. So to go or navigate to that, you'll first need to go to proxy in Charles proxy. In that you'll have to go to SSL proxy settings. Here what we'll do for the sake of decoding all the traffic, we'll just put in star in the host section and for port also we'll put in star. Usually what happens, you can either place your particular IP address or host address here. Even you can create or specify a particular port like uh, 443. And in case of host also, if you have a specific host, you can just mention it here. So what will happen only for that particular host and port, the traffic will be decoded. For now, <clears throat> as a part of training, we'll just keep this as star and star so that we'll enable traffic or we'll try to de decode all the traffic through the SSL proxy settings. I'll just say OK. You'll see that one entry has been added here. And here also we'll add OK. Now, to see the difference which comes in, we'll just open one site that is fake json.com so here you can see my particular traffic has been uh, present or this is just a fake api and we'll see how the request response is displayed when we start the recording so now i've started the recording here we'll just send the request once you send the request i'll just stop it for now once you send the request for this particular fake json if you go to this particular point we'll wait for few seconds here you will see the whole json text which is present in the browser as well so whatever was sent through this particular site or this network traffic was automatically collected in the charles proxy now what difference we get so the third step which we did was like we had already set up the enable ssl proxying so i'll just click this or I'll just disable this. I'll click on OK. And now let's try to again send the same request. So here if I start the recording, I'll just clear this for more better understanding and we'll send it again. Again, this particular traffic has been sent. I'll just stop the recording. Now let's see. Now if you see the content here, you will see that both the things, like it is, it is not at all decoded the uh, content which was present in the site is in the form of or is in encoded state similarly if we just again go to ssl proxying and we enable this and we'll try to send the same request again i'll just send it we will start the recording first and here we'll send it again so now you will see the icon has also changed here so here you'll get lock icon and here you'll get the thunder icon so whenever you get this icon now if you navigate you will see the contents of the site are displayed here here if you see unknown is also displayed and the content is also in encoded state and here it is in decoded state so this is the typical difference you get when we have the proxy or ssl proxy setup done properly so this is the third and final step which you need to do while configuring charles proxy so now let's look into how the mobile traffic is captured. So one more setting we have in Charles proxy. If you go to proxy, there is one setting where you can select the Windows proxy, which is selected by default. Now as our remote device is connected, so we can and we just if we just want to look at the traffic which is coming through the remote device for in this case, we have this one. So what we can do, we can just disable the traffic from Windows proxy. So if we disable this, automatically all the traffic which is present in your current machine will be removed and the traffic 
will record only the stuff which is coming from mobile so now i'll start recording and here if we just refresh this particular page you will see the wikipedia uh, page things or the stuff from wikipedia wikipedia page is displayed here now one more thing to highlight is if you open if we open certain pages suppose if we i open google you will see there are certain pages or sites or a particular data which is not at all loaded and if we navigate to that particular section and if we just scroll through or check the overview section we'll get to know that ssl handshake with the client failed so the reason you are getting this issue now we have just seen or we have just navigated through the browser content of it but the actual reason why we are getting this issue is uh, even if we go to charles proxy page so suppose if we navigate to the charles proxy documentation here if we navigate to the android section so this is just your home page of charles proxy in the documentation section if we go to android so in android you will get proper description of why it is not working as of android n so for all android n or android 10 and above devices we will have to set up ssl proxying separately for applications and to set it up separately on the application so that we can just bypass the ssl proxy for that particular application and the security is maintained so here if you see there are specific steps so in the section or in the folder res xml network security so in the section res xml we'll have to add a file that is network security config.xml here for your reference i have just opened it so suppose this particular section so this is my apk that is app lock apk and in this this is the folder structure in this we have a res folder and in res folder if you go to xml so here you will get the network security config.xml so obviously currently it is in encoded state but to give you the picture how it works so if you open or whenever your code is in android studio or any debugging tool or any development tool which the developer is using there he will need to add certain security parameters or certain tags in xml to make the whitelisting for charles proxy so this is the particular code which needs to be added similarly in the manifest file also we'll need to add this particular code once this is added and the app is bundled so your application will be easily accessible for charles proxy uh, note that this is only applicable for android n and above so android 10 and above devices obviously in the market currently all the devices are mostly android 10 and above so from a qa point of view or testing point of view we will need to make sure or we will need to create a debug build in which we will need to enable the charles proxy or we will need to whitelist this particular code uh, you can get it done from the developers and whenever you are going to release the application make sure this particular code is removed once you add this code then you won't be getting the error which we got for ssl handshake so that was about overall introduction and installation regarding charles proxy stay tuned for next module of charles proxy we'll be having demo of the same don't forget to subscribe non functional club channel hope this session was useful thank you